Well, in this video, I want to go through a couple of concepts from section 2.3 in the textbook. And those that are going through uh, the reading checks, the, I'm going to use number question 16. So in this question, we're given information about uh, each state in the United States uh, percent of the population that is obese. So um, we have some population data. We're given population for all 50 states. And we're given some summary statistics. So there's some questions that give us data sets, but since we're already given the summary statistics here, uh, I don't really need to download that or bring it into StatKey since we have all the information here. But I just want to note that this is a population, not a sample. This is for all 50 states. The variable is obese, percent obese in each state. N is 50, that's, a, that's the population size. And we have a given mean, standard error of the mean. We'll talk about this uh, in chapter three and chapter four. We'll ignore standard error for right now. Uh, standard deviation, minimum, Q1 is the 25th percentile, median is the 50th percentile, Q3 is the 75th percentile, and then maximum. So you read this as in some state has a obese, obesity rate of 26%. This Q1 means 25% of all 50 states have an obesity percent less than 26.375%. I will talk about more percent, more about percents later. First question here, what are the mean and standard deviation? I'm gonna go just a quick little summary here. We talked about a couple of these already, looking at population and sample variables. So I have mean, the population variable is mu, the Greek letter. Sample is x bar. For proportion, it's a uh, the English lowercase p and p hat for population proportion. Correlation looks very similar. It looks like a p, but this is a Greek letter. This is the Greek letter rho. And for sample statistics, sample correlation is r. We're going to come back and talk about correlation in chapters 2.5 and 6. And then standard deviation is sigma, the Greek letter sigma for population. And for sample, it's S. So in this case, what are the mean and standard deviation? I typed this in already. Uh, our mean, mu is 28.766. That's the mean. And standard deviation is given right here. STDEV uh, is an abbreviation, 3.369. Okay, so uh, the, maybe a new concept for you would be the idea of a z-score. So part B on this problem says calculate the z-score for the largest value and interpret it in terms of standard deviations. Okay, then we'll do that for the smallest value. So the largest value here is 35.5. So some state has an obese percent of 35.1%. All right, on this last row, I've got the z-score formula. And I've got written in two different ways. It's a x minus mu over sigma if we're dealing with a population. If we're dealing with a sample, it's x minus x bar over s. But both of these formulas mean the same thing. Z-score is the mean minus whatever, oh, sorry, this is actually backwards. Let me change that. The data point minus the mean, and then that whole thing divided by standard deviation. So I want to write down the largest data point. That's our data point here. X is 35.1. So if that's our largest data point, then our z-score, right, z equals, I'm going to use this formula here, it's x minus mu, so 35.1 minus 28.766, double check that, yep, 766, and we're going to divide that whole thing, divided by the standard deviation, 3.369, double check that value, 3.369. And I'm going to throw that in my calculator here to get an approximation. Excel be my calculator. So looking at that value, we've got 35.1 minus 28.766, and divide that whole thing by 3.369. We get a z-score of 1.88. 1.88. And I want to note here the z-score. Z-score, excuse me. Z-score of one 
0.88, and I'm going to make it clear here that it's positive because we will have negative z scores, means the maximum value of 35.1 is 1.88 standard deviations above the mean. So that's the z-score. It's a way of, um, I'm going to call it a standardizing what a value is. So instead of that, that being the max, the max in this case is almost two standard deviations above the mean. So for the largest value, it would be 1.88. It's 1.88 standard deviations above the mean. So let's go through the same process, but with the smallest value on here, the minimum, 21.3. So here, if we're doing the minimum value, an x value is 21.3 value. So z is equal to 21.3 minus the mean, 28.766, divided by standard deviation, 3.369. And that's going to be approximately right here, 21.3 minus 28.766 divided by 3.369 minus 2.216. So this z-score is negative. This means that 21.3 is 2.216 standard deviations below the mean. So instead of a raw score, it's kind of like the frequency, um, a relative frequency we looked at the other day. This is a way of standardizing a value. So it's minus 2.216. And that means it's 2.216. Notice I'm keeping this as positive, standard deviations below the mean. All right, last question on here. If we're given a distribution that is relatively symmetric and bell-shaped, given an interval that is likely to contain about 95% of the data values. So I have what's here, the 95% rule. This is a very important and kind of powerful rule. If the distribution is symmetric and bell-shaped, it looks like a bell, the normal curve, the bell-shaped curve, then approximately 95% of the population lies within two standard deviations of the mean. So two standard uh, deviations is 2 times 3.369. Write that down over here. So that's going to be 6.738. So then 95%. It, let's put it about approximately 95% of the data lies between, and I'm going to take the mean, so that mean minus 2, or 6.738, and mean plus 6.738. This about 95% of the data lies between, I'm going to take the mean on here, which is 28.766 minus 6.738. Put that in here, that's 28.766 minus 22 22.022. And if I take that same value, the mean 28.766, and then add 6.738, adding those gives me 35.504. So 95% of the data should lie between 22.022 and 35.504. Right, I'll check the answers, see how to make sure I have enough accuracy. Partially correct. Probably just made a typo right there because this one's correct. 
So I'm going to want to double check my arithmetic, but the process is correct that 95% uh, of the data is within two standard deviations above, that's the 35.5, and below the mean.